Good morning, good morning. Good morning. It's already Friday morning. What date is it today? The 4th. The 4th already? The Feast of St. Francis. Yeah. St. Francis of Assisi. And what does that... What, how, how come you got reminded about that, Mia? What happens on October 4th? Blessing of the animals. Blessing of the animals, that's right. Associated with St. Francis of Assisi, huh? It's not happening today, is it? Well, I think they're going to do it. Is it tomorrow? They're going to do it today. Today? Okay. It's a pity we can bring Big Parker there. He's going to eat up everybody. <laughs> okay. Well, so today we will go to part two of uh, how to pray the rosary. Okay. So yesterday, yesterday we were talking about, we were talking about um, how to pray the vocal prayers, right? Our Father, Hail Mary, Glory be. We were saying we, we have to pray it with attention. That... Uh, that um, we have to mean what we say and that doing that doesn't necessarily mean praying slowly okay? we don't associate slowness with solemnity you can pray your vocal prayers with intensity with plenty of meaning even if you might have to do it at a pace at your regular talking pace right the important thing is that you do it mindfully and you say uh, the prayers intentionally and if i may add if i may add okay these vocal prayers are meant to be huh vocalized okay so so meaning meaning we have to say them aloud especially if you are praying the rosary uh, or any vocal prayer for that matter uh, together with a community of people you are praying with in this case with the family okay so vocal prayers are meant to be said aloud okay you are meant you you, you should be heard and as saint augustine has said you know uh he who sings prays twice so i'll add to that he who prays uh audibly <laughs> prays well yeah, because that's what it's meant to do, right? They're supposed to be vocal. It has to be audible. Let 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 our lady hear your Hail Marys. Because that's you know that when you pray your vocal prayers um, audibly and, and and project your voice, it helps you physically and mentally, it helps you to to say it properly. To say it with meaning. Okay? When you vocalize it, it helps you to say it meaningfully and to pray with meaning. Because, because the, the, the very act of vocalizing the prayers okay, helps you put emphasis on certain words that could generate in you the devotion that those prayers uh, mean to evoke. Okay? So it is really actually a help. That's why you know the church is very wise. In making us do these things this way because it actually helps us uh, personally to pray very well what is that girl groaning about oh, okay there you go just gotta give her her food okay so today we go to step two okay step two about praying the rosary hi Erwin good morning Hi. okay uh, and what is that the second uh, tip on how we can pray the rosary very well is to pause, meditate, and continue to think about each of the mysteries that we are praying about in the decade that we are praying. Okay? So, to pause, meditate. <laughs> I'm not. Gonna, I'm distracted by that girl. You better keep her eating. Don't let her complain. Okay, I'm gonna lose my my trend of thought here. Okay, so to meditate on the mysteries. That is part of praying the rosary. Why? Because the rosary is nothing more really but, I mean the mysteries of the rosary are nothing more but the life of Jesus and Mary okay, that we are trying to relive. 
So it's practically like reliving the gospel story, reliving the biography of our Lord and our Lady in the form of the prayer which we call the rosary. Okay? That's the intention. That's the whole idea behind the rosary. It is to always bring to mind and make, make it fresh in our minds, to refresh our minds with the gospel stories, with the, with the life, the biographical sketch of our Lord and our Lady's life together on earth. Okay? And the mysteries that our Lord has wanted us to understand about the Trinity and about Himself and about the cross and about the resurrection. Okay? All of the mysteries of our faith, all of the, uh, all of the more important uh, um, uh, events in the life of our Lord and Our Lady are all capsulized in the rosary. That is why if we only pray the rosary every day, and we pray it well, we are actually reliving the gospel. We are actually um, um, being inside the life of our Lord and our Lady every day. And we're doing it one uh, mystery at a time. Okay? So you see how, how the rosary has been divided into different uh, mysteries. right? Um, now we have four. When I was growing up, we had three. Right? The joyful, the sorrowful, the glorious. And then in 2002, St. John Paul II introduced a fourth uh, mystery, which is the mystery of light or the luminous mysteries. Right? So with all of these four mysteries divided into five sub-mysteries within them, okay, you have how many mysteries are we contemplating in the entire rosary now? Four mysteries with five mysteries underneath each. You got 20, 20 events, 20 big happenings in the life of our Lord and our Lady that we recall every time we pray the rosary. And we do that one decade at a time. Okay, so in these coming days of October, that's what we're going to try to do. We will try to uh, uh, comment here about one mystery a day the mystery that pertains to how uh, we are um, encouraged to meditate on the mysteries on a daily basis so you have when do we do the joyful mysteries what day monday and saturday so we are encouraged to meditate on the joyful mysteries of the life of our lord on monday and saturday and then when do we do the sorrowful mysteries Tuesday and Friday. Very good, Chabelle. When do we do the glorious mysteries? Huh? Wednesday, Wednesday and? Sunday. Sunday. When do we do the? What's the other one? Mystery of light or the luminous mysteries? Huh? On Thursday. Okay. So, so every day of the week has been divided into the different mysteries, and we are encouraged to. Meditate on all of these. Now, what do we do when we meditate? What, what does that mean when we meditate? So, let's, let's uh, review a little bit about what that means. So, to help us, meditate means to, uh, to think about the mystery. To think about the uh, particular uh, uh, scene in the life of our Lord that we are uh, uh, contemplating at that particular mystery. So, for example, you say uh, the first joyful mystery, or today, what is today? Today is Friday. So, what mystery are we supposed to do today? Sorrowful. The sorrowful mysteries, right? So, the agony in the garden. Let's just start there. Let's just start there. The agony in the garden. So, what do we do when we meditate? It means that after announcing the mystery, okay, the first sorrowful mystery is the agony in the garden. One very good way to meditate on the mystery is to pause a while. Give it a few seconds of thought. Instead of running immediately to saying the Our Father, right? Pause a little bit, a few seconds. And there, in those few seconds that you are pausing, you bring to mind, you recall the mystery. 
Where was our Lord in the agony in the garden? What was going on there? What was he doing? Why was he sweating blood? What does agony mean? Was he afraid? What were the apostles doing at that time? Where were they? Okay. What was happening? It's to relive the entire scene of the agony in the garden. Okay. In those few moments that you that you pause, okay? that you pause to consider, to think about that mystery, to make it alive again. See, make it alive again in your memory, and recall what we have read in the Gospels about that particular incident. Refresh your memory about that mystery, and then, and then. You go and say the Our Father and proceed with the ten Hail Marys. And as you are saying your Hail Marys and you are meaning every word that you try to, to say in the Hail Mary, you still have the agony in the garden scene in the back of your mind. See? You are still thinking of the agony in the garden at the same time that you are saying your vocal prayers. See? Now, that is the way to meditate. On the mysteries that is the way we will stay grounded and focused on praying the rosary okay? that is what it means to really really pray the rosary very well that is why it is quite funny when people are just rattling off they may forget that all you may that I'm only I'm that you that you do that my mouth got paper and I'm that what are you doing you know you, you, it's it's like it's like an auctioneer trying to auction off an item in an auction right I mean uh, that is not praying that is not the rosary that is not the way to take advantage of this beautiful beautiful prayer that Our Lady. Uh, uh, has been encouraging all of us to pray every day. We have to pray the rosary in a contemplative way. See? In a contemplative way. Meaning, we're thinking, constantly thinking of that particular mystery that was announced prior to the Ten Hail Marys, the decade that we are praying about. Okay? So meditate. Meditate on the mysteries. That is what will help us to really understand what the rosary means and that is what's going to lend meaning to the rosary okay we're not just rattling off uh prayers mindlessly but rather we are actually thinking 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 deeply as much as we can about the mystery that we are contemplating and that way we really unite our hearts and minds to the mystery to the life of our lord see and we are really recalling the very many beautiful uh, things that had happened in the life of our Lord. And it will help us to keep our Lord fresh in our memory, in our hearts, the whole day. Okay, that's it for us. We are off to, oh, we're, gonna ma we're going to Mass this afternoon. That's right. So, well, we start our work day. Okay, everybody, have a good weekend ahead of you. See you next time. Bye. 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 Ah, Eva cooperated. She kept quiet. Very good. Bye-bye.